Good evening, Star Families. This is Mrs. Lymeister, Superintendent at State Street Academy. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I uh, am going to address uh, what has been going on with our COVID situation at State Street Academy and also share with you some of the plans that we've been making. So um, it has been a stressful time, but also a blessed time. And, you know, they say that you can really see a person's character when they go through times of stress and I have to say that I am proud to be a part of the State Street Academy family because of the character that has been shown. I have never seen people that have been able to share and love and have compassion. The teachers have been so supported by the families and we really, really do appreciate that. So I won't linger on. I just wanted to make sure that I acknowledged you, I acknowledge your students, and then I would like to share with you some of the plans that we've been working on. Um, as you know, um, on March 13th, that was the first day that we were away from the children, and the teachers took that opportunity to plan for, or we took a day for a professional development. We didn't know anything about COVID at that time. Sometimes I still wonder if we do know about COVID. <laughs> so, but we learned as we went along and we often said how we felt like we were building a plane as we were flying it. But I commend the teachers for the great job that they did. They spent that entire weekend planning and by the 16th, we were able to put food into the family's hands and also learning packets. So they were learning and being fed two of your most basic needs. And with that, we continued on and then we got the technology out to the families. We worked on the internet and different things um, and just trying to get everybody into the mode of the online learning and the distance learning. And I know that's been a struggle for the families. It, it's been a struggle for us as well, but we pushed through and now we are almost to the end. We only have nine more days of school left. So as I share these plans with you, I want you to know that I've taken into consideration your feedback from the surveys that we had uh, regarding balance calendar, because even though we decided to not go with a balance calendar, the feedback that I received was crucial to our plans for the next year because it let me know and allowed me to know where you are at and where your thoughts are at. Um, also, I gathered feedback from when I was doing the food program and distributing food. I also gathered feedback from emails, um, Remind, it's very helpful. Everything that you say to me, I put back here, I ponder on it, I think about, okay, why are they feeling this way, what can I do to alleviate? My goal has been to keep the stress level down as much as possible. And so as we move into the fall, I do not want us to have any undue stress. One of the things that we're going to have to look at is are the CDC guidelines, regardless of when we start school, when we go back, those are gonna be a part of our life. Some of them not necessarily a bad thing. For one thing, um, we are going to put in stickers that show us which way to go up the step. So the stairwell that's on the south end of the school will be up, the stairwell that's on the north end of the school will be down. That's a great practice. Regardless of COVID or normal flu or common cold, it doesn't hurt to take that pattern in and out the doors because we're not passing each other. And so some of these things I think have been good for us and things that we can adopt as families. So let me get going because I'm rambling. You know I'm a talker. So we have several plans that we've come up with and then I will tell you what our favorite plan is as a staff, and then I would like to get your feedback on that and see how you feel about it. So plan A would be to continue the hybrid program that we are doing now. It's a mixture of online and packets. Most of our students in fourth through sixth grade are doing primarily online, but some of our students, that didn't work for us, so we adapted it. We differentiated, we gave them the packets because that worked better for them. The online just was not functioning for them and so they have a mixture of both. Um, the pros of that is this is something that the families are already familiar with. It's easiest on the staff, they're familiar with it and all we would have to do is tweak it and just make it even better. You know, mainly our primary goal with that would be to get more interaction online. However, the cons of that is that how do we have accountability? 
How do we know exactly what the students are doing and making sure that they are learning? The other piece is, what about parents? Eventually, we all have to go back to work. We have to start living our lives again. We have to make money. This hybrid program does not work for families. It's, it's not functional. You cannot continue doing this. So of the four plans that we came up with, that is not our favorite, but if the governor decides that, that we need to stay out of school, then we will continue with that, but we will collect your feedback to see ways we can improve upon it. Plan B is the students come to school four days per week, split the homerooms into two sections, group A and B. So on Monday and Tuesday, group A would be with your teacher. On Thursday and Friday, group B would be with their teacher. On Wednesday, it would be a day out of school, a day that we use for cleaning and for planning. So this is going to be tweaked according to the governor's guidelines and what we are allowed to do and what we are not allowed to do. And so it might be that the teacher moves from this class to the next class in the same day, depending on the students. When the students are, depending on the guidelines, when the students are not with their homeroom teacher, they will be with a support person. For example, this year after COVID began and school was ceased, we put Miss Wendy in with Miss Eugenio. So she supported her and came up behind her. That same type program would occur if we went with plan B where the students are in school four days out of the five. Miss Wendy would be there to support Miss Eugenio's class. And so we would have that support set up throughout the grade levels. Um, Ms. Russell would be there for Ms. Hayes class. And as you know, we are moving all the teachers up. We're looping them with the class so we can get that continuity. The children did not get to have a closure this year with their class. It is stressful on everyone and they feel, some of them feel like they've been ripped away. We certainly feel like they were ripped away from us. And so by looping with our children, we get to take them to the next grade level, give them a sense of security, give you continuity, and move forward. And looping is a great idea. It saves so much time in learning, and it also, uh, teachers know their students. So, Plan C, um, this one is where students come to school two days per week, and they stay home three days. The homerooms are split into two sections. Group A would attend on Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday is the sanitation planning day, and Group B would attend on Thursday, Friday. The pros of this, um, the staff said that you would get a lot of material covered in those two days. The students will have somewhat of a normal seat, um, but it would be harder on parents than Plan B because, again, the parents need to go back to work, and someone would have to be home with the children for three days out of that week. So that was definitely not our favorite plan. Um, this is our favorite plan. Plan D is that all of our dreams will come true and life goes back to normal and everybody goes back to school at the same time. I don't know that that'll happen. <laughs> I look at that as a unicorn plan because I'm not sure that that will really take place. But if it did, there is a possibility that if we can follow the guidelines and we can stick to that plan and, and put those CDC safety procedures in, that would be wonderful. To have all of the students in school five days a week, that, that would be a dream come true. But more than likely, if that were to occur, there would be some very stringent guidelines as to the wearing of the mask, putting up the plexiglass, putting up the dividers between the students and things of that nature. So those are the four plans that we are looking at. Like I said, plan B is definitely our favorite where the students come to school four days a week, split into two homeroom sections, group A and B, and that A and B, that A teacher, you know, or the homeroom teacher will work in conjunction with their support staff. Um, one of the ideas that we had for this is that the teacher, when she's teaching group A, they might um, do a live stream into the classroom that group B is in, and then they would switch it, and when she's teaching group B, they would live stream into the group A. There's many variations that we can do, and that would be dependent on your child, because at State Street Academy, do different, we do differentiate according to your child's needs. So I would like to hear some of your feedback. 
Um, I will print this out for you and I will post it on Facebook, but as I was saying, I cannot make a definitive answer until the governor decides um, what we're going to do. I've heard that this information is going to come out on July 1st, so we will wait and see, and please don't hesitate to contact me if there's anything, and I mean that, anything I can do for you. God bless and have a great evening.